Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Heavyweights of the Faith, brief biographies of great believers who changed the world. Charles Spurgeon was a Calvinist Baptist minister in England during the Victorian era. He was born June 19, 1834 to John and Eliza Spurgeon in Kelvedon, Essex, as the first of 17 children, although only eight survived to adolescence. As a boy, he loved books, and John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress was one of his favorites. At the age of 15, while out running an errand, Spurgeon was caught in a blizzard and sought shelter in the first building he could find. Thus, he entered Primitive Methodist Chapel on January 6, 1850, in Colchester, England. There he heard a sermon on Isaiah 45, verse 22, which says, Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Spurgeon pointed to that sermon and passage of scripture at the moment he gave his life to the Lord and became a Christian. Later that year, Spurgeon moved to Cambridge, joined Andrew Street Baptist Church, and began to minister as an itinerant preacher. By October 1851, his preaching style and ability were recognized as above average, and he accepted the pastorate at Water Beach Baptist Church, where he later produced his first publication, a gospel track, in 1853. At the age of 19, in April 1854, Spurgeon moved on to become the pastor of New Park Street Chapel in South Wark, London, the largest Baptist congregation in London at the time. Within months, he was famous, and by the age of 22, he was the most popular preacher of his day, earning him the title of Prince of Preachers. The congregation at New Park Street Chapel quickly outgrew its building and several subsequent venues. During this time, Spurgeon published his sermons as well as devotionals, hymns, poetry, and commentaries. Using his own money from book sales and speaking fees, Spurgeon personally financed more than one-third of the $3.6 million cost of building the Metropolitan Tabernacle in 1861. It was the largest church building of its day with a capacity to host 6,000 people at once. Spurgeon never took a salary from his new megachurch, instead accepting money only from his publications and speaking events. It is estimated that he delivered about 3,600 sermons, preached to over 10 million people, and personally baptized 15,000 believers over his lifetime. Charles Spurgeon was a prolific writer whose works fill 49 volumes of sermons, commentaries, sayings, anecdotes, illustrations, and devotionals. His sermons have been translated into nearly 40 languages and continue to be used in curricula as seminaries as well. In the plainness of speech while maintaining an eloquent, Spurgeon brought conviction to the hearts of the hearers without ever offering an altar call, but offering instead a meeting at his office door every Monday morning for anyone interested in giving their life to the Lord. He carried on the rich theology of Calvin, Bunyan, Edwards, and Wesley, and was even called the modern Whitfield in his day. Spurgeon strove to preach only Jesus Christ and him crucified. Spurgeon ministered in London for 38 years, founded 66 parachurch ministries, including a ministry to prostitutes, one for policemen, two orphanages, 17 homes for widows, and a free seminary, now Spurgeon's College, to help ministers sharpen their skills. It is estimated his net worth upon his death was about $50 million, but he died with only $250,000 in his bank account because he used his own resources to support these ministries. Spurgeon was outspoken in his opposition to slavery and also in his concern over the theological decay of Britain. In 1887, he called for the Baptist Union to draft a statement of faith affirming the inerrancy of scripture and the bodily resurrection of Jesus. When the Union refused, Spurgeon withdrew his membership in what became known as the Downgrade Controversy. Charles Spurgeon had married Susanna Thompson in 1856, and the two had twin sons in 1857. Unfortunately, neither Charles nor his wife enjoyed robust health. Spurgeon struggled with depression, arthritis, and gout. He and his wife would often recuperate in Menton, France. It is there where Charles Spurgeon died on January 31, 1892. Spurgeon left a rich history for his short years, 
Aside from the aforementioned sermons, publication, and parachurch ministries, Spurgeon had been friends with James Hudson Taylor, who founded China Inland Missions. Spurgeon personally recruited missionaries to Taylor's cause. David Livingstone enjoyed Spurgeon's sermons and carried a copy of one with him throughout his travels in Africa. Spurgeon's devotional morning and evening, as well as his exposition on the Psalms, the treasury of David, remain his most popular works today. Spurgeon's passionate evangelism, theological integrity, and generous spirit are inspiration for all Christ followers. Thank you to Compelling Truth for the use of their written biographies. Please visit compellingtruth.org for more information. Compelling Truth, presenting the truth of the Christian faith in a compelling, relevant, and practical way. Compellingtruth.org.